Hello, my name is Ethan. I run a production company here in Fort Wayne and I make videos primarily for social media. And today I'm gonna to tell you about the three most important parts of my desk setup. I'm also gonna include a bonus video that goes through almost everything that I use to make my creative work. So if you're really interested in making your desk look exactly like mine and finding some specific accessory that I use, stay tuned till the end and click through to watch that second video. three super important things that I consider when I first started coming up with this desk many years ago and I've been kind of high heightening and changing things over the last year or so as I've honed in on this perfect setup as I would like to describe it and so there are three main things that I kind of honed in on and found to be the most important things to me as I work from home and do long editing sessions and I'm a video creator the three things are sound screen and standing there has been so many videos made about the new Apple display that came out along with the Mac Studio. I've watched so many of them and I really haven't been hearing anything new from them in quite some time, unfortunately. This just became a big topic of consideration because Apple provides that unique amount of features that makes everyone mad because it, it's an expensive uh, payment price for those unique features. but. I have been very happy with my display and I've been very interested to see what everyone who's not using Apple display has been using or, or has upgraded to. So I've been using this monitor, this 32 inch BenQ monitor. It's color accurate, it's very large, and I really like the extra space for multitasking. There was a long amount of time where this was my primary monitor, so it was really the only thing I had to use. Um, and so that was always good to have two full large documents or two web pages uh, up and running without feeling like I'm compromising. So I figured if I was going to have one BenQ monitor and I want a second one, I should go ahead and get another BenQ monitor. So I ended up getting the 27 inch because I wanted to have a quick visa release on this so that I could take this with me on set. And I figured, wow, if I like this display, imagine how great it would be if I brought it with me on set for a client monitor or for myself to check playback. I also use it on set as a multi-view monitor for the Ada Mini. Both these monitors are equipped with a matte finish out of the box with some sort of a screen protector uh, type material. I've never felt the need to really take it off. And as you can see from all the B-roll clips, there are some advantages when it comes to light pollution on the matte displays. Now, what I've been hearing more recently, especially with the studio display videos coming out, a lot of people say, well, if you want your display to be sharper, then you would want to not have a matte display. But uh, I found the performance to be more than satisfactory. You know, in the times where I'm actually looking at a video and need to know crystal clear perfectly what's going on, those times are very limited. And I much prefer optimizing for all the time that I spend on my computer doing dumb, boring, lame things uh, that aren't like color color checking and making sure everything's perfect. So as you can see from my setups, I really like a nice clean desk zone. So the BenQ stands are very good. They're very robust, high quality, and I would definitely recommend using them if you need a stand. But I prefer my Visa arm so that I can have all of this space for uh, all of my things. And I really feel like I can clear the desk off and do work on it uh, without the monitor stands being in the way. Unfortunately, this fully monitor arm is kind of at the tippy top of its space, so it can wiggle a bit. Um, and this is actually a cheap monitor arm from Amazon, so it's not the wiggling champ either. However, I find that with daily use, uh, these, these monitors don't shake all that much. And a lot of my shake, I think, is generated from how high I keep my desk when I'm standing and sitting. So that's just part of the way things are. All right, next I wanna to talk to you about sound. So when it comes to sound, I took a bit of an unconventional approach and some of the newest updates to Mac OS have kind of made my approach seem kind of silly at the time, but I will detail a few 
key examples of this uh, setup being pretty clutch and kind of give you my thoughts about what you could do if you're looking to do something similar. So I think when I first started thinking about upgrading the sound for my uh, setup, I wanted to get two HomePod regulars, HomePod biggies, and use them as a stereo pair. That's kind of what I imagined in my head. That's what I wanted. I wanted the smarts, I wanted the great sound quality. I wanted the microphones, everything. Now, unfortunately, a wire connection would really be what I needed. So as I was kind of considering that as my next option, there's actually a deal that came across uh, one of the deal websites I checked called meh.com for these two Libertone 2 Zip speakers. And this was a company I knew, I knew the sound quality was there. And I also noticed that they were AirPlay 2, which means when you swipe down on your Apple device, these speakers just always are there ready to be played to, kind of like a, a HomePod. But in this instance, they don't have the microphone and in Siri that can be used like the HomePod. So when that deal I saw from Matt came across my desk, I figured I better cut my losses, save a couple dollars and choose the option that had a little bit more flexibility as well as dual input. So I bought two of those speakers at 50% off retail price and I use them now as my speakers for my uh, studio space. So I really like them, they're really loud and I use a 3.5 millimeter splitter that takes a left and right channel and pipes it into two different speakers. So I actually do get stereo sound with these smart speakers plugged in all the time, weird setup that I've created. What I'd like to be able to do and what changed with one of the more recent Apple Mac OS updates was that you can now use your Mac as a destination for playback of a podcast or a video. So now, instead of needing smart speakers with AirPlay 2, I could literally have any dumb speakers plugged into my Mac. As long as it's on and on the Wi-Fi, I could then AirPlay what's on my phone or my iPad to my Mac and have that great sound anywhere in my home. So I don't really need the speakers anymore, but one of the reasons I got them was because I knew they were battery powered AirPlay 2 speakers. So if I do ever replace these speakers, I can just plug in something else and move these to any room in my house and add AirPlay 2 support into those different rooms. One of the things that I wanted from my HomePods was a really loud, bassy, exciting, room-filling sound. And these speakers absolutely do deliver on that. They're absolutely quite loud and they sound really great. I am just a man who likes to listen to music and has mastered audio in a professional setting in the past. So I have some experience, but I'm by no means a sound designer or anything like that. However, if I'm making an edit and it's supposed to be exciting and fun and thrilling, I can turn up the audio and really enjoy that as I'm editing it. And then if I can enjoy it while I'm editing it, then it's probably actually pretty good. So that was one of the reasons I wanted some big, boomy, nice speakers and these absolutely deliver on that. If you airplay a YouTube video to your Mac and you have two displays or one display, it will take one display to be the video itself and then the other display will be blank. I think that is a very silly idea. I don't understand why Mac OS blacks out your other display. It's more than capable of handling running Mac OS and receiving that airplay signal, but unfortunately that's what they've decided to do. So. What do we do about that? Well, if I airplay directly to the speaker, then the video stays on my iPad or my phone and that I don't have to deal with that problem. So I do use that airplay 2 functionality in that way every once in a while. Now, even though the Libertone connection that I have is a wired auxiliary connection, there is always going to be some delay there. That's why I still have a pair of headphones that I use to make sure that I'm getting good audio when it comes to a professional sense. These Sony headphones that I use are super standard and very normal headphones you'll find throughout the video production, podcasting, radio environments. However, I do highly recommend these deep pads that uh, I use. They make them way more comfortable and offer a little bit of sound isolation, which can be nice when you know I plug in my AC units and fans and things like that. It helps get rid of a lot of that ambient sound and it's not sound isolating, but it does add some more sound isolation, if you will. Another cool thing about the sound on my computer is that I use a Stream Deck toggle switch to toggle between my headphones and my speakers. This has always been a long running annoyance for me, whether I had to plug in audio cables or using USB interfaces, I always found it tedious to switch between the two. So what I do is I have a shortcut here 
uh, that's two keyboard shortcuts and then it uses the toggle function. So if you press it once, it presses one shortcut, press it again and press the other shortcut. But I use a program called Audio Switcher. This program goes through your devices and picks out which ones you want to use. And I have set my primary and secondary device. And so it switches between my headphones and the speakers. I would die without this plugin. I, it makes my life so much easier. It's one of those things that you just save six seconds every day and it just makes you so much happier so i highly recommend the program audio switcher if you do use a lot of audio sources um, and then if you're super into it you can make set up the keyboard shortcuts and maybe use a stream deck button like i do okay this last one that i want to talk about is a little bit weird because it's not really a setup item as much as it is the desk itself and then one accessory that i think is extremely important i'm not just talking about standing desks in general they're definitely kind of a fad thing that's kind of come and is kind of here to stay in a lot of ways but i think just in general the idea of moving around every once in a while and not staying seated all day if you can that's the thing that i think is really important so for a long time, I didn't have an electric moving up and down desk. I just had a tall desk and a tall chair, and that's how I was able to stand up at times. So I think that's a really important thing, and I think that's a better way to live your life than to just sit at your desk all day. Another accessory that I think is extremely important is a foam anti-fatigue mat. I do not think standing for long periods of time is sustainable, and I think you need to add the anti-fatigue mat you can get one from a kitchen or one that's custom designed for office use like mine. You can get whichever one you want, but I think once you add that, um, or maybe a pair of really comfy slippers with good cushions on them, then you can actually stay standing for a long time. And then you actually get the health benefits of not being crouched down for hours at a time. As video and audio professionals and people who work with computers a lot, you know, you can call your insurance and you can insure your computer. You can make backups of your data so you don't lose it, but you only get one body. And as it grows older, it starts to wear down and doing things like sitting all day and editing are scientifically proven to not be great for us. So I think beyond just standing up every once in a while, which I think is a huge thing, and I love that I have this electric desk that can move and be any height at all. But beyond that, I think moving around and doing some activities every once in a while also really helps. So I personally use a Pomodoro timer and do about 25 minutes of work depending on the activity and then take a, at least a five minute rest. You know, there's lots of times during my rest where I'll go use the restroom or go grab some water or something and move a little bit that way. But if I am going to stay sitting around in my office, I try to do some kind of movement and activity, whether that's cleaning up the office and uh, messing around with some gear or maybe something like a little wake out. So wake out is a little app that you can use and it gives you hand stretches and eye exercises and little squats and different leaning things to do with your desk, sitting, standing. It has all kinds of different customized little work from home workouts that I really enjoy and they really make me feel like I'm taking care of my body uh, in this small way during the day when I'm grueling and editing for hours and hours and hours. So highly recommend wake out but beyond that any kind of standing desk, whether that's uh, a laptop that you put on top of a cardboard box or um, some of the other budget options I've heard is that you go to a Home Depot or a Lowe's, find a workbench that's at a little bit higher spot and then maybe use a, a stool like mine that has an adjustable thing that's nice and high. Um, or, you're, you know, there's all kinds of things you can do to just get yourself a little more active, a little bit more standing. That's all that I'm trying to say I think is important about uh, your health. So the desk itself, I really went all out with this big, long, large desk. And I really like that I can set lots of things on this desk because there is all that extra room. I'm of course, as a YouTuber, very anxiously awaiting my Grove made desk mat. Uh, it's been on order for a little while, but I'm going to get a black leather desk mat to set on here and really complete the desk look. I really like that I can hide all of my cables underneath and then keep some of my more ugly accessories underneath my riser 
just kind of keep everything nice and tidy and keep those cables running in certain spots. So that's pretty much my desk setup. That's what I find important and useful when it comes to my desk. If you are curious about more of my accessories, there's another video right here that you can click through. I'm gonna go through almost everything on my desk and you can take a look at it and see if any of those items are for you. If you are interested in purchasing any of these items, I would really appreciate it if you use my affiliate link down below. There are links to a shop called Moment. They have tons of video gear and desk accessories. So if you do want to look for any of these items, please do check there first. Uh, that's an easy way for you to support me with your patronage to Moment. So thank you so much for watching. I really encourage you to take some time to put your desk together in a really special way. For a lot of us, it's a place we spend a lot of time. And uh, once you spend a little bit of TLC and make your desk your special place, I think it can help you be more productive and more happy and better at what you do.